I bought every single 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook combination and settled on a fully upgraded 16 inch MacBook Pro as my new main computer. I'm talking M1 Max chip, 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU and 64 gigabytes of RAM. Basically the most powerful MacBook Apple has ever made. And after doing a ton of real life workflow testing and running multiple benchmarks, last week I ended up returning it for a less powerful model. So what's the reason that you may ask? Well, it was just too powerful for my workflow and I was actually wasting my hard earned dollars on unnecessary upgrades. Let me explain. Also, big thanks to Hostinger for sponsoring this video. More on that later. Okay, so traditionally, I've always tried to max out the hardware when buying performance-oriented laptops. So for example, the 14 and 16-inch MacBook Pros, or even a Windows gaming laptop like the Razer Blade lineup. There's two main reasons for this. Firstly, future-proofing, and secondly, maximizing performance, for example. Now, if you've got a really demanding 3D application or 4K DaVinci Resolve render, Easy, just throw more GPU power or RAM at it, right? Well, usually I would have said yes, but now it's a little bit more complicated. All right, so let's have a look at my current workflow and compare a base model 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook to a fully upgraded 16 inch M1 Max MacBook. Starting off with video editing, here's a 33 minute 4K multicam timeline on Final Cut Pro. Now, if we look at render times, you can see a significant difference between the two with the fully upgraded 16 inch MacBook massively outperforming the 14 inch M1 Pro base model. This is of course an impressive difference, but when I render a video, I usually just walk away and go get a drink or something or do some light work in Photoshop while I'm waiting for the render to finish. I'm not just sitting there for 15 minutes looking at the progress bar. And if you think about it, rendering a video is like 1% of the overall video editing process. You're gonna spend 99% of your time on the timeline, cutting clips, color grading, and actually editing the video. So let's take a closer look at this part of my workflow. On the left is a base model 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook, and on the right is the fully upgraded 16 inch M1 Max MacBook. Now I have embraced a smarter, not harder mindset with my workflow, and as such have switched to recording in ProRes wherever possible, and not DNX HR, or H.264 like I used to when I predominantly used a Windows PC. Now this means I can take advantage of the specific ProRes chips on the M1 Pro and Max. And as you can see, I'm using multicam with three streams of 4K video with color grading, transitions, and 3D charts playing back in real time. Playback is really smooth, there's no dropped frames, and I honestly couldn't tell a difference between either model. And this is the most important thing for me while editing, being able to just edit the video well. I don't want dropped frames, program crashes, slow playback, etc. And as you've just seen, while actually editing this timeline, I couldn't tell a major difference between the two MacBook models, despite the 1900 US dollar price difference. Now, if your workflow consists of web development or designing websites, for example, like mine does with the Created Tech website, check it out by the way, link down below, you don't need to waste money on GPU, CPU, or RAM upgrades. They won't have any noticeable impact on performance, and in my opinion, the best upgrade you can make with these new MacBooks for web development and coding and website design is going from 14 inch to 16 inch screen size and getting that extra screen real estate for reading code or editing web pages. And that brings me to the sponsor of this video, Hostinger. Hostinger is a world-class website hosting platform with over 29 million users worldwide. Hostinger offers more services than any other web hosting company. They also provide domains, SSL certificates, 
web design services, and more. Now, what I personally love about Hostinger is how user-friendly their control panel is. It can be used by anyone with little to no experience in web development. You can create a website in minutes or connect your existing site with just one click. Hostinger uses Lightspeed web servers that have a significant performance improvement compared to Apache servers, so you can be assured your site will load lightning fast. And if you ever need support or more information, check out their tutorials, help guides, or feel free to just get in touch with them 24 seven, 365 days a year. Check out the link down below and use code created to get up to 91% off on all yearly hosting plans. Now I understand not everyone is a video editor or web developer. Some of you guys are coders, artists, or architects, for example. So your workflows might be completely different to mine. So let's take a look at Blender, for example. Again, sure, you'll see a big difference in render times but actually creating the scene and playing it back, often you won't notice the difference. And this is why I encourage you to do your own research into how specific upgrades might influence your workflow. Everyone's workflow is different, and as a result, so is the specific device and upgrades you should purchase. So there's a couple of reasons why I think the less powerful M1 Pro and M1 Max configurations can still perform at such an insanely high level. And it's all to do with working smarter, not harder, like I mentioned before. Apple isn't just throwing power hungry CPUs or massive graphics cards into these laptops and using brute force to achieve better results. <clears throat> the new Intel Alder Lake CPUs. <clears throat> so what are they doing? Well, here's a few examples. Using too much RAM and need to use swap memory. Sure, macOS just swaps to the insanely fast internal SSD with speeds of up to 7.4 gigabytes per second. Doing an EV Blender render or previewing an After Effects animation. Okay, here's 200 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth available for that on the M1 Pro. Now. Guys, quick sanity check before I start sounding like too much of an Apple fanboy. There's still a lot of scenarios where equivalently priced Windows laptops will destroy these new MacBooks. For example, 3D rendering in a lot of programs such as Blender and of course gaming, no surprises there. But I think we've finally reached a point where we're seeing companies like Apple design these really optimized little subsystems, if I can call it that. For example, the ProRes accelerators or unified memory that many people can really start to take advantage of. We've seen this in the past, for example, Nvidia's CUDA. So it's great to see Apple bring a similar kind of mindset into their MacBook lineup. All right, so after all of my testing and all of the benchmarking, which laptop did I personally settle on? Well, to be quite honest, I could actually get away with just a base model 14 inch M1 Pro if my budget was constrained. But I'll be using this device as my main computer and doing some fairly intense workflows. Plus as it's a business expense, I can justify spending a fair amount on a new device. So I opted for a 16 inch M1 Max with a 24 core GPU and 32 gigabytes of RAM for 3,299 US dollars, a saving of $600 compared to the fully upgraded version that I just returned. Now, I don't think I'll ever be able to take advantage of the extra eight GPU cores and certainly not the extra 32 gigabytes of RAM with the previous model of Mac. I've also got a lot of videos comparing the different upgrade options. For example, eight core CPU versus 10 core CPU, 16 versus 32 gigs of RAM. If you're interested in those videos, make sure you check out the channel for them. Now with that extra 600 US dollars I have, a great place to reinvest that is gonna be upgrading the internal SSD, I think but I'm still deciding on either the two terabyte or four terabyte SSD. Either one is going to make both my bank account and myself cry, but at least I don't have to carry an external SSD everywhere I go. So 
I guess even with that, there is a silver lining. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below if you have any questions. But apart from that, I'll catch you in the next one.